Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Shore. I talk about our play games that today we're gonna be playing Super Mario 64. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and finished a couple of worlds. And in this episode, we're getting super close to the ending because I'm just gonna go for 70 stars. And also I wanna show off all of the worlds. And I did a quick thing where I was like, if I wanted to show off all of the castle secret stars, cause there, there are a few of those, and show off one star from each world, at least, then we're pretty close to pretty much just being done. I don't know if the sentence I just said makes any sense, but it's one of those things where it's a lot easier to explain once it's actually happening. So right now we have red coins, which is... The red coin missions always suck, and plus we're in shifting sand land, so I like the idea of this place, but an execution is probably not one of my favorites. I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion or anything. I want to grab all of the ones on the ground first because those are the toughest, and then we'll grab all of the ones in the air. You'd think it'd be the other way around with the ones in the air being the toughest to grab, but the ones in the air are actually pretty close to the pillars, so we could just jump off of those and start flying, while the ones on the ground are always next to quicksand, so I want to get those ones out of the way first. I'll just grab the wing cap over here. If you grab a wind cap while already having a wind cap on you, it'll start over the timer. So that's five, six, and I see seven and eight. Seven, please don't run out of time. Eight? Okay, now we just need to make it back. I'm gonna immediately get over solid ground just in case it runs out, which it might in a couple of seconds. I'll just fly over here. And we're safe. that and that's star number 51 our last star here is pyramid puzzle now this one's a bit rough I'm just gonna slide in here I could probably go in through the top but that would mean I would have to do the four pyramid not the four pyramid stuff but the four pillars both start with P, so I got confused. And I think it'd just be faster if we climbed to the top. So, I don't like climbing across this thing because it's slow, so I'm just gonna jump up here. Oh! Don't do that, I was trying to triple jump, but I was too hesitant because I thought if I kept holding forward completely, then I would just run into it, and then I got scared. So as we get up here, the way that you want to collect the five secrets is there are five coins that you want to grab, and there's not really a good way to tell what they are. But if you go from the top, then it's a pretty straight path. So this one's a bit tough. This first part is a bit tough because you have to take a leap of faith. I thought I was gonna fall for a second. I think if it were a bit lower, if I, th I think if the platform were a bit lower, then I would have fallen off. Next one is over here. Next one's over here. And then 4 and 5 were just along the same path. Make sure to jump though, but be really careful with what direction you jump in. Oh, 
because especially in the more linear parts if you jump just a bit to the left or to the right you'll fall back down and you'll have to climb back up which has happened to me many times so now that we've beat course 8 it's time to move on to course 9 and we're actually going to head back over here because if you don't remember when we went and fought Bowser for the second time we first had to go through Dire Dire Docks is the name of it and it said it was course 9 and so now that we've completed courses 1 through 8 we'll just head through here star number 2 is chests in the current so you have to hit the chests in the correct order and you first want to start with this one over to the right it's to the left of this clam and you want to head in a counterclockwise direction there will be three chests that you want to hit when you go in this direction and then once you get that third chest then there's a fourth one up near this uh, water tornado I know there's probably a better word for it a cyclone or like a I'll just put on screen what the proper name for it is it's probably something really simple and I'm just being adult a dork okay this one this part is really tough because the water cyclone typhoon the water thing the water tornado is uh, constantly sucking you in if you get too close and so you have to hit the chest and then immediately start swimming away and once this cutscene plays, keep spamming A, because once that cutscene stops, it immediately starts sucking you in again, so you have to be very vigilant. Pole jumping for red coins is... I don't like this star very much. It's just not very fun to do. I'm gonna swim back to where the submarine was, and there you'll find that it looks a bit different. While we're swimming there. Something weird I do is when I state the time, uh, I'll sometimes say, like, it's 8 a.m. in the morning, when sa just saying 8 a.m. would already get across that it's in the morning and not at night. There are a lot of weird things like that, like how some people call ATMs ATM machines, when the M in ATM means machine. Human language is, or the English language is very weird. I thought that the pole was coming towards me at a faster speed, and so I long jumped prematurely. <laughs> Younger me was kind of a dork. And a bit annoying, I guess, is the best way for me to describe it, because I remember constantly, like, talking to friends, like, Hey, I just uploaded a new video. Have you seen my new video yet? Which is like the real-life version of asking someone to subscribe to you in the comments of another person's video, which sucks. So yeah, young me was kind of a dork. I recently uh, went through my channel and I unlisted a bunch of Let's Plays that I haven't finished, which means that they're not privated, so you can still go and see them. I made a playlist where you can go through and see my unlisted videos. But basically, I just put in there a bunch of uncompleted Let's Plays so that people who are just starting to watch stuff on my channel will have a bunch of completed Let's Plays to watch, 
and once you get done with that, you could look at some of the unlisted ones. Because, like, going back through it, I don't want people to get, like, really invested in a Let's Play and then for me to just quit it completely. I do think I want to go back and redo some of my uncompleted Let's Plays in the future. Like, right now I'm currently planning on a Phoenix Wright Let's Play, because those games are really great. And I'm thinking of maybe if I get the Switch version, I might redo the Link's Awakening Let's Play. I have a ton of plans for Let's Plays in the future. I've also been thinking of doing... Where normally my shorts, the YouTube shorts that I do, are just clips from uploaded videos. I've been thinking, if you guys want... I could do I could do extra YouTube shorts where instead of just being clips from videos I could also do some other stuff that doesn't really fit my channel uh, but doesn't really fit my second channel either and it would be a fun just short thing I don't know how best to describe it I'm not good at describing things but with that we get the 54th star through the jet stream, that star may sound a bit familiar because I'm pretty sure there was a star with the same exact name in Jolly Roger Bay, and you basically have to do the same thing here too, except there's a bit of an extra added step. We want to get back to the main area here where there used to be a submarine. And there's this area right here which looks like the same place as Jolly Roger Bay. Except now there are rings coming out of it and you have to just swim down. And it's a bit finicky because you have to go through five hoops in a row and sometimes you'll go right through it, but it won't count it. Like right there. Or wait, no, that worked for some reason. There we go. It's a bit finicky, like I just said. I wonder if there's a glitch that you could do where you could do this in Jolly Roger Bay 2 where if you just time your A presses quickly then you can just get there without using the metal cap. But I suck so I'm just gonna grab the metal cap. Not to say if you use the metal cap you suck, this is how you're normally supposed to get it. I just suck at doing speedrun strats. So now it's time to put into effect that thing that I said I was going to do earlier, where now I just want to show off one star of every world, because I want to show off all of the worlds. And so if I just show off one star from every world, I'll get to do that. Time to unlock this door. We got it from the second Bowser fight, which was 25 stars ago. Yeah, I did the math right. Right here we have this uh, little area where you just run up. It, some people it causes motion sickness for, so sorry if that happened. Wrong area. I always get the two areas confused. But course 10 is right over here. This one's a pretty fun one. Or a pretty fun one to get to at least, because... We have this mirror right here, and it shows Lakitu. And you can see you can see all the different paintings and the reflections, like uh, the Jolly Roger Bay one. Then right here we have the uh, Tiny Huge Island one, which is a one which is one we'll get to. We have the Bob on Battlefield one, but you can see the Cool Cool Mountain painting, but it's not here in reality. If we jump at the wall. Welcome to Course 10, Snowman's Land. Snowman's Big Head is our first star here. And is the only star we'll get, because I'm only going to get one star 
per world from here on out. So the way that you want to get this one is you just want to climb up the snowman. And I might have to do this the normal way. You know, I'll just do this the normal way. Screw speedrun strats. I haven't properly tried to speedrun this game in a while, so apologies if I'm a bit rusty with that. I'll just do this the normal way. So right here, we get up here and the snowman says, Hey, who's there? What's that climbing on me? Is it an ice ant? A snow flea? Whatever it is, it's bugging me. I think I'll blow it away. So immediately get off the ice platform. Or you could stay on this very edge, but be very careful. And you want to wait for the penguin to get over here, because if you go into that uh, bit of air that he's spewing out, not only will you get flung off and you'll have to climb back up here, You'll also... You'll also lose your hat. Which is not good at all. So you just want to jump on top of the penguin. And he'll bring you right over. He sometimes takes two, step, two steps back. Which can be a bit annoying. But eventually you'll get over here. Once you get to, to, to the top of his head... You get star number 56. So, the next world is... What was it? I think I know where it is. But I'm unsure. I think it's this one. Please be course number 11. That's 13, gosh dang it me. Also, that's a thing you can do to get up there. You can just jump and it lets you up. That's 12, I think. So, is Wet Dry World number 11? Yes, Wet Dry World. So, this one is... A lot of people talk about this one because a lot of people get a quote-unquote negative aura from it. Maybe from the music, or maybe from how the background is like a pixelated JPEG of a city. And also, there's an area where you can swim around and you can go to this area called the town. And it seems a bit claustrophobic, because you're in a box. Whatever it is, people get creeped out by this level. But Shocking Aerolifts is actually a pretty easy start to get, and it doesn't show off any of the mechanics of this level. So I'll just quickly explain. This painting isn't an or ordinary painting, because if you jump in it at it from a low point, then the water level will be at the ground, and it'll basically just be like walking on normal floor. But if you jump at it at the very tippity top, the place will be completely flooded. So where you jump in controls the water level. Let me go ahead and show that off. So I'll go into the same star, and look, since I jumped in at a high point, it's completely flooded and you have to swim around. You have to be very conscious of this when going into levels. There's this part right over here, which you're supposed to shoot out of a cannon to get to, but if you flood the place completely, then you're able to just jump up there. And this is the town section that I talk about, and I can definitely see why this creeps out a lot of people. Because you're going through this claustrophobic tube. And there's some cage walls right over here. So yeah, this is the town. And you're in a box, basically. And you know, it's, it's weird, because it's like, did people live here previously? Or who built these buildings? I'm probably just thinking too much about it, but... On to course number 12. So, level 12, I think, would be this right here, which has a very small painting. Course 12, Tall Tall Mountain. 
So this one, it has the old music from Bob on Battlefield and Womp's Fortress. I kind of consider this to be the theme song of the game. But yeah, it just tells us to do exactly what we're supposed to do. We have to scale the mountain. So while we're doing this, I want to talk about a star in here, because it's absurd what you have to do. You have to climb up partway up the mountain, then you have to jump down to this weird area and talk to this ba -bomb. And he'll open up a cannon, which you have to climb across this, like, one inch wide gap, or not gap, but one inch wide, wide platform. And then, once you do that, you have to shoot out of, a, out of the underpowered cannon. cannon. And then once you do that, you have to actually, like, aim at this mushroom, and if you miss, you die. Super annoying, but thankfully we don't have to do that as we get Star 58. Okay, I actually know where Course 13 is, because I accidentally went in over here earlier when I was looking for Course 11. Tiny Huge Island. So the gimmick of this area is really cool. There are two islands basically, well it's the same island, but when you jump into a pipe, the island gets bigger, or you get smaller, whatever. I think you get smaller because also the enemies get bigger as well. So, Pluck the Piranha Flowers is our star here, and it's basically just to kill all of the enemies and then a star appears star. And that's star 59. Okay, we'll go ahead and get stars from courses 14 and 15, and then we'll end off the video. And Sorry, I got interrupted by my timer there. Next time, uh, we'll go ahead and do all of the castle secret star stars and then after that we'll do the finale so we're very very close to the ending here reacting to the star power the door slowly opens so uh, course number 14 is tiktok clock and the gimmick with this level is that it has the the hand spinning around to 12 o'clock three o'clock six o'clock and nine o'clock and when the minute hand is on 12, and you walk into the painting, well, it's not really a painting, when you walk into the clock, when the minute hand is on 12, I believe that freezes time. Uh, if you walk in on 3, then that slows time. If you walk in on 9, that speeds up time. And I think 6 is random, and if you do it on any other number, then it's just normal time. So I'll go ahead and walk in on 12. So since that's on 12, now everything is frozen. This level is pretty tough, because it has an annoying red coin mission. And don't even get me started on the 100 coin mission. That's one of the main reasons why I didn't want to 100% this game, is because the 100 coin missions, especially in this level and the next level, are torturous. That's course 14. And then course 15 is one of these two levels. Because there are two holes in the wall. One leads to a castle secret star. And one leads to the 15th course. I think I'm supposed to go into this one? No, I don't think that was right. Oh, it was right. Thank... Thank... Uh... Course 15, Rainbow Ride. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab any random star here because I don't want to go through the Magic Carpet Ride because it's very slow and very tedious and I failed. Ah. But yeah, it's very slow and tedious. And it's just rough to get through. I think I'll go for the Tricky Triangles one, not only because it's alliteration, but because it's an easy one to get to, and semi-easy to do. It's easy to get to, that's for sure. You want to hit the switch, 
and these pyramids here will flip upside down. And you have to get to the top of there before time runs out, giving us star number 61. Here we go! Mario hits his head on the exit there. But anyways, I've shown off all of the different worlds, and next time we're going to collect nine secret castle stars. And I think I've done the math right on this one, but I'm unsure. We'll do the nine uh, secret castle stars, and then on the video after that, we're going to beat the game. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye